Brainy here from Kit Guru, and in this review, I'm going to be taking a look at the TT Esports Nemesis Switch Gaming Mouse. It's a mouse that has a load of different buttons, and it's going to retail for around £50 in the US and £60 here in the UK, so it makes it quite a tempting price for those of you across the pond. I've been trying out this mouse using the large Dasher mouse mat that's also from TT Esports and it retails for around £22 and I'll talk about it a little bit later on in this review. The overall design of this mouse is pretty attractive. I like the graphite colour on the body and it's got a pretty sleek design that sort of reminds me of the Razer Death Adder. Unfortunately, I think the thumb rest does sort of ruin it a bit. Uh, it looks a bit cheap and plasticky, almost as if it was stuck on as a bit of an afterthought. The branding is nice and tasteful. You've got the TT Esports Dragon logo and it lights up like the rest of the mouse. There are three different zones of fully customizable RGB backlighting on this mouse. The scroll lights up, the logo lights up and also the switches on the side of the mouse. It's all controlled using the Command Pro software and there's a ton of different options to choose between. There's like nine different lighting effects and of course you can change the colours and everything. It is sort of a decent brightness and I think it's quite appealing um, and it makes this mouse a little bit more attractive. The body on this mouse is a medium size that I think should suit most people. The weight is also pretty average at 100 grams and it glides really well thanks to the three Teflon feet on the bottom. This mouse is advertised as being suitable for all different grip styles but there's a few different sort of design aspects that make me think it's more suitable for people that use a palm grip. The high arch makes it really comfortable as it sort of supports your hand in a palm grip and there's also a little ledge on the outside of the mouse that means when you use this mouse in a claw grip or a fingertip grip uh, your finger sort of rests on it and it's a little bit uncomfortable whereas in a palm grip it actually sort of supports that outside finger. However, it's still usable and I like the way that the left and right click are indented. I did find this mouse a little bit too slippy as well. Even though the sides are sort of a textured plastic, I would prefer a rubber over the plastic. The build quality on this mouse feels very good. It's very sort of like strong and sturdy and well finished and it doesn't sort of rattle when you shake it around. It's also got a braided cable which is quite nice to see and it's a decent length at 1.8 meters. Unfortunately though, the braiding itself is a little bit rough and it's already sort of started to fray. I'd also be a bit worried about the longevity of the switching system. I know that most people probably won't be switching the buttons around that often, but it is extra moving parts so it means there's more of a chance that something could go wrong. The switches on this mouse are by Omron and they have a 50 million click life cycle. They're more lightweight and less satisfying than the Omron mechanical switches that I really like, but they still have decent consistent feedback. The scroll wheel on this mouse is quite lightweight and also quite skinny, uh, but it does scroll really well and it's coated in a nice soft rubber. On a mouse, you would normally expect the button beneath the scroll wheel to change the DPI, but by default on the Nemesis switch, it actually changes between five different profiles, which you can set up to also change lighting and macro using the command center software. The Nemesis switch is obviously a mouse that's made for playing MOBA and MMO games with all its extra buttons. It's got a patented key switch design that means it has 12 extra buttons that you can arrange in different configurations. I've really, never really used an MMO MOBA style mouse before so I was a little bit apprehensive but I actually found it pretty easy to get used to. I've recently started playing World of Warcraft and I did enjoy having all the extra buttons on this mouse. You can use a maximum of 8 out of 12 at a time and switch between them by pulling out the stopper and turning one of the four different wheels. They aren't mechanical switches but they are good to press with a defined click and I also found them stiff enough to not accidentally press. They have decent spacing between them but I think some different textures might be quite nice to help distinguish between the different buttons as I did find myself accidentally pressing the wrong one sometimes. The buttons are also in a pretty decent position, however I think depending on your hand size and your grip style, a couple of them are a little bit difficult to reach and press. The sensor used on this mouse is the Pixar 3360 sensor, it's a good sensor and the DPI is adjustable in 100 DPI increments up to 12,000 DPI. The sensor on this mouse is also set slightly off center to allow for the key switching design but it doesn't seem to really affect performance. 
With this mouse, I wouldn't really go above 5,000 DPI, as above that, it uses something called overdrive mode, which is gonna reduce the accuracy. Although I think 5,000 DPI is probably plenty enough for most people though. I found this to be a really good sensor for gaming and general use. I've been using it on 3000 DPI and there's no sort of noticeable acceleration and jittering. When it comes to the liftoff distance, you can adjust it using the command center software. And on the lowest setting, it's sort of like one to two millimeters. I've definitely seen it better on more expensive mice, but it's certainly not bad. So even though this is a MOBA MMO style mouse, it's still going to be suitable for first person shooters like CSGO. Now I'm going to move on to talking about the Command Center Pro software. It looks good, it's reasonably intuitive to use, it gives plenty of different customization options, and a few things are a little bit sort of uh, clunky and time consuming, but I did find that it sort of works as it should and I haven't really experienced any crashes. At the top, you've got the mouse tab and the macro tab. The macro tab is pretty self-explanatory. It's pretty easy to use and it just sort of works really. You can record macros for lots of different things. You then, on the mouse tab, you've got the five different profiles across the top. So each profile, you can select it and you can also change the profile name or even link it to a program if you wish. And then the uh, customize tab, you can reprogram any of the different buttons on the mouse. So you simply front view, side view, uh, side view, you simply click on the button and then you select what you want it to do. This is one of the aspects that I did find a little bit clunky because you've got to go through lots of different sort of lists, select the one you want, uh, sensitivity, and then say what you want to do. And it's just, it just seems a little bit clunky compared to other like uh, reprogramming software that I've seen. On the lighting tab, you've got all the different effects. So there's static, pulse, spectrum cycling, snake monkey, wave, reactive, blink, and also system temperature. So that's all the different lighting effects. And then of course, you can change the different colors, uh, what sort of pattern things you want. So there's plenty of customization, speed, brightness, uh, whether you wanna change, sync all of the areas or change them all individually. Then you've got the performance tab. So this is where you change the DPI and you can have up to four different settings to switch between. You can also adjust the polling rate and you can also adjust the button response time. I've never really seen that before. Um, angle snapping, which of course you want like completely off as you can. Um, and then there's this strange little feature called center action. It's sort of bugged anyway, because even though it's off, it is actually on. And the reason it says, that it's on uh, and the reason that I know that it's off that if you do turn it on the mouse does no longer function as a mouse so I'm not sure what it's meant to do but basically just avoid it don't ever turn it on because if you turn it on you'll have to plug in another mouse in order to turn it off again because it just completely freezes the mouse and it just doesn't function anymore uh, so yeah that's a bit weird uh, basically avoid um, and then we've got the calibration tab so you can enable a uh, surface calibration for whatever mouse mat you're using. So obviously I've been using the uh, TT Esports Dasher mouse mat. So I've got that uh, in their own one and I've set that up to select the Dasher Large. You can also calibrate it to any surface. So if you're just using like your desk or whether you're using a mouse mat from a different brand. And then of course you can change the lift off distance as well. Uh, for some reason on this profile, I've got it set as high as possible but I'll move it down and then you just click apply. Always remember to click apply because if you don't click apply, once you've done anything on the software, it will just completely wipe what you've done, which is a bit annoying. But overall, I do think it's pretty decent. I mentioned at the start of the video that I've been testing out this mouse using the Dasher mouse mat, which retails around a 22 pounds. I've got the large size, but it's also available in mini, medium, and extended sizes. I quite like the overall design. The branding is quite tasteful, and I think the black and red coloration is gonna suit most of sort of the thermal take peripherals. The edges are stitched, which is nice to see, as it means there's not gonna be any sort of peeling, and this mouse mat is made to last. On the bottom, it's got sort of a rubbery textured surface and it does grip to the desk pretty well, but I have definitely seen better, even though it doesn't sort of move around while you're using it, it's not the best. 
when it comes to the surface of this particular mouse mat, I don't really think it's suited to the Nemesis Switch mouse, which is obviously made for MOBA and MMO gamers. The surface of the Dasher mouse mat is very smooth and very slippy and very high speed. So I think it's definitely more suitable for FPS gamers. It's also huge, so it's perfect for those of you that use your mouse on really low sensitivity. I personally prefer that a mouse mat that has a little bit more friction to it, so I'm not sort of slipping and sliding all over the place, but I think the price is about right for a mouse mat of this size. Overall, I do like the Nemesis Switch mouse. There's quite a few things I would like to see improved, but I do think that has quite a lot going for it. It's got the very innovative key switch design that's backed up with a good sensor and a well-built attractive body. However, the problem that with recommending this mouse is a rather strange pricing difference between the US and the UK. TT Esports have confirmed that it is correct. In the US, where this mouse costs $50, I think it's a very good price. I think you'd probably struggle to find an MMO style mouse with the same features and performance for less. However, Kit Guru is based in the UK where this mouse costs £60. Quite a little bit of a difference. That puts it in direct competition with the Logitech G600 and the Corsair Scimitar Pro. It's definitely something to think about, especially as the Nemesis Switch isn't perfect. If you like this video from Kit Guru, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from Kit Guru, hit the subscribe button.